Okay, welcome to the Maundy Thursday service. Um, when the music starts, worship starts. We observe Maundy Thursday, the night that Jesus gave the disciples a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Throughout this season of Lent, we have reminded ourselves of the need for reconciliation with God and with one another. Tonight, we also remind ourselves that we need to live into Jesus' commandment to love one another. We will also celebrate the sacrament of communion tonight as an embodied way of living into the reconciliation that is always open to us. Please join us in the prayer of invocation. God of love, as we prepare to remember the events of this poignant night, open our eyes to see the beauty of Jesus' self-giving love and by your spirit, work in our community a desire and commitment to serve each other and our hurting world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
join us in the prayer of confession. Christ shows his self-giving love by washing his disciples' feet. Surely we do not live up to Christ's example. We confess now our sin and our need of a savior. Merciful God, we have not loved you with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not loved our neighbors as you have taught us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We are indifferent to the saving grace of your word and life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have seen and do testify that the Father has sent the Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Jesus we remember tonight is the Savior of the world. In Christ we are forgiven, and through him God abides with even us. Praise God to whom all blessings flow.
Join me in the prayer for illumination. Send your spirit among us, O God, as we meditate on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Prepare our minds to hear your word. Move our hearts to accept what we hear. Purify our will to obey in joy and faith. This we pray through Christ our Savior. Amen. Our reading tonight comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, beginning with verses 1 through 17, and then concluding with verses 31 through 35. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, now the son of man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. as we prepare our hearts and minds for this guided meditation, I ask that you close your eyes, that you breathe gently, breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Breathe in, breathe out. Focus on your breathing. 
If you feel your mind begin to wander, then focus on your breathing first. Breathe in, breathe out. Jesus is something new, something different. God gave the law to Israel. God made covenants with the people of Israel. But time and again, the people failed to live into their covenants. When that didn't work, God entered the created world in the person of Jesus, a new covenant. And on this night, we observe and celebrate the new commandment that Jesus gave the disciples and also to all of us. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in this world, he loved them to the end. During Lent, we've talked a lot about love and reconciliation. In tonight's reading from the Gospel of John, we see and hear Jesus' love for his disciples. Jesus embodies his love for them. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. I had dinner the other night with an elder from the Shrewsbury Presbyterian Church. Somehow the conversation drifted to our communion liturgy. He said that he really liked the way our liturgy begins on the night Jesus was arrested. He prefers arrested to betrayed. Yes, Judas betrayed our Lord, but the truth is we all betray Jesus all the time. There was only one night on which Jesus was arrested. How have you fallen short? Where have you failed to live into Christ's call to be disciples? And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. Jesus embodies his love for his disciples by washing their feet. Jesus humbled himself physically. He took the form of a servant. He took the posture of a servant. Just as we pour the waters of baptism, Jesus pours the water to cleanse the feet of the disciples. Jesus embodies his love for them. How have you embodied your love for Jesus? How have you embodied your love for one another? He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do now know what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Can you imagine what it would feel like to humble yourself and wash the feet of another member of this congregation? Would you be willing 
to let another member of this congregation wash your feet. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Have you ever felt unworthy of Christ's sacrifice? Have you ever been too proud to accept an offer of love or an act of love from another person? Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet also, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean and you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. Jesus knows that Judas is about to betray him. Jesus is God. He knows what's in Judas's heart. Too often, we think we know who is unclean. We think it's someone else. We forget that we all betray Jesus at times. How have you fallen short? Where have you failed to live into Christ's call to be disciples? After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Jesus is teacher and Lord. Jesus sets the example for us. Whose feet have you refused to wash? Which examples of Christ's love for others makes you uncomfortable? Which of Christ's examples are you unwilling to follow? Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus tells us that we will be blessed if we follow him. Yet we are often afraid to live into those blessings, especially if the service to which Christ calls us is scary. What are your fears? Where are you unwilling to go? Jesus said, now the son of man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Jesus reminds his disciples, he reminds us, that this is part of something bigger. This is bigger, something more urgent than his arrest and crucifixion. 
Jesus reminds them that he is connected to God the Father. Jesus reminds the disciples of this after he has reminded the disciples that they are connected with him. Jesus embodies this connection by washing their feet. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. Jesus is preparing the disciples for their life and work after the human Jesus has died and been resurrected. While they can't possibly understand what Jesus is saying at this moment, it will become clear after the resurrection. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. Jesus calls the disciples little children as a term of affection. They are close to him, dear to him. They have followed him faithfully, lived in relationship with him from the moment he called them into service. Yet they cannot follow him to the cross. Not yet. They cannot participate in the resurrection until after Jesus has been raised from the dead. They cannot dwell with God until Jesus has made a dwelling place for them. Jesus is preparing them to wait. Have you ever had difficulty waiting for God or for Jesus to make the way clear? Why is waiting so difficult? I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is not a general address to all believers. This is a set of instructions for disciples, for the followers who will become the apostles. By this, Jesus equips them for their ministry. Where have you failed to love another disciple? How have you fallen short? Where have you failed to live into Christ's call to be disciples? You may open your eyes and please continue to breathe. And I would remind you to gather your elements together. Beloved, we come to this table today knowing that we all need God's grace and it is only by God's grace that we are forgiven and saved. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. 
whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he returns. With thanksgiving, let us offer God our grateful praise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And also lift with you. up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right for us to give our thanks and praise. With joy we praise you, gracious God, for you created heaven and earth, made us in your image, and kept covenant with us, even when we fell into sin. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who by his life, death, and resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we join our voices with all the saints and angels and the whole creation who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to God the Father that our Savior, Jesus Christ, before he suffered, gave us this memorial of his sacrifice until he comes again. Therefore, we proclaim our faith as signed and sealed in this sacrament. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, our God, Send your Holy Spirit so that this bread and this cup may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we all, may we and all your saints be united with Christ and remain faithful in hope and love. Gather your whole church, O Lord, into the glory of your kingdom. Take, eat, and remember me. Drink and remember me. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
go in peace to love and serve.